all right so i'm coming to you with another car conversation um because i just got done with work and um this is just this is how i deal with god i um i um you know I, I struggle with getting quiet before God and I struggle with just sitting still and being in his presence and um, because my when I do you know my thoughts tend to be all over the place I'm worried about what I got to do next and this and this and this and just all of those things and so it's hard to sit still when your mind is constantly going and so um, somebody told me once that uh, they were like well if you need to fold laundry while you pray just fold laundry while you pray don't you don't you know and you know you feel guilty because there's you're supposed to pray a certain way right and there are definitely times where you do you need to be sitting still and then you need to just hear from God but um it's not always going to be like that. So don't, you know, don't feel this pressure to, I got to sit still and pray. No. And so for me personally, um, like if I'm folding laundry or if I'm cleaning or whatever the thing is, when I'm doing a task, I can do so in a way like I'm, I'm doing the task, but, um, my mind isn't wandering like if i'm praying while i'm doing the task let's just say this because i'm it's like i have something to focus on but i also can like clearly speak to god versus oh i gotta do this and i need to do this da, 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 da. like they're like i don't know why but that's just what works for me and so what works for you was work works for you but i just wanted to share that with you but anyways as i was working this evening um I was and I'm I'm one of those people. I just pray all day, like, <laughs> um, because I, because I should. Like, I just feel like I I can pray throughout the day because Jesus is my friend <laughs> and the Holy Spirit is with me. So that means I can talk to them at any time, right? So I do. Um, and so as I'm cleaning, I'm sitting and I'm praying um, about uh, a situation uh, that happened, and I felt offended by it. Um, and I don't even want to say offended. I really, it really is, um, um, one of those things when I feel unheard or, um, like misunderstood, I struggle with that. I, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I want people to get my point. I need, Hey, hear me, hear me. And, um, and as I was praying about that, because I was like, God, you know, I don't want to be frustrated or I don't want to be, um. I want to deal with people in great with grace i want to deal with people in love and so um even when you know their perspectives may differ differ from you know mine i want to be able to deal with people in love and so um i was praying about that and as i was praying there were some things that you know god was just speaking to me and talking to me about and so i had this whole spiel <laughs> to give to y'all um and i was so i was like okay let me hurry up i gotta get to my car i gotta do this car conversation um and so i had this whole spiel ready to go and i got to my car and i was getting ready to record it and it was just like yeah something right now and one of the things i'm like holy spirit got my words um help me to say what needs to be said and so it just wasn't working the video wasn't working i tried to record it again it wasn't working then i need to get back to doing what i was doing so i was just like okay let me just stop and so after i got off i ended up um listening to one of the um ladies that i know uh and her uh one of her podcast her uh um prayer things and she does this thing where she you know does this good morning holy spirit and so she has a prayer and then she'll share a word that um the holy spirit has given to her god has given to her and um she was talking about perspectives the very thing that i was going to come and speak with you about um and she was talking about perspectives and she was um going through some different things and i'll link the video um in my in in the description because i do think that you guys need to hear um what she has to say because it was so it 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 shifted how i was even thinking about what um i was coming to you because i was coming again coming to you about this thing about perspectives because um it, it it's like there we 
we see that we see things we tend to deal with people and we tend to see things that happen to us through our perspectives through these different lenses and so for me um as a christian woman i see things a certain way as a you know i see things through this lens of as a as a christian as a woman as a african-american as a mom as a as a wife as a you know all my different titles all the different things i see things through those lenses right because those are how, that's how i'm experiencing life but i also see things um from the things that i've been through so because i grew up in foster care i see things through a lens of you know from that foster care perspective i see things um from a child who dealt with um being molested and um and uh being abused i see things from that perspective i you know from some for somebody who has who has um walked um as a lesbian before i you know i've dealt with homosexuality and um and i lived that way for eight years out of my life and you know one of the things like 10 years ago bruh you couldn't have told me <laughs> that i would be here you know married to my husband with two kids like you that would not have been a conversation we were having um but because i walked through that lifestyle there also is a, a, a perspective that i have when it comes to even um how i interact with homosexual people who who um choose to live a homosexual life like i, I deal with things through my perspectives right um and so i just want people to get that right this is my perspective and i want people to understand it but just the same way as i want people to understand my perspective i also need to hear them right because they're not going to understand um what i've gone through because they can't walk it they can't they haven't been through life the way that i've been through it and vice versa so while i'm sitting there frustrated because they can't get it i have to also extend the same grace to them because they haven't walked through i haven't walked through life like them so i don't understand you know a white person's perspective i ain't i didn't grow up white i don't have you know i so i can't speak from that perspective i can't speak from the perspective of a single mom because i don't have that situation i have the support of my husband now can i empathize with other situations yes right i can empathize with the mom um the single mom and what she's going through because as a mother i do understand some things with dealing with kids but i can't i can't negate if she's struggling with something or going through something i can't negate that just because it's not true for me and so just because something isn't true for you does not mean you get to negate that for somebody else and so um one of the things i want us really to be uh, careful of as christians is because there's going to be a lot of people we interact with right, right? there's going to be our brothers and sisters in christ that we interact with there's going to be people that are in the world there's going to be so many different things that we interact with and they're going to be coming to us from their perspective right so they're going to be you know they may be angry about something they may be hurt about something they may be going through different things whatever whatever it is they're going through something they're you know they're all, all these things that that bother them down they're going to come to you through their perspective from their lens and it is your job it's our job <laughs> to hear them to hear because because the word tells us that we need to you know hear you be quick to hear be quick to listen and slow to speak and so instead of having this you know script to tell them this script to speak out to them this whole spiel for them we need to listen and hear them and hear their perspectives because no we we haven't walked in their shoes we don't know where they're coming from but we do need to be able to hear the hurt because our job is to love them right our job is to love them through what they're going through we can't be so caught up in how they see the world god's job is to deal with their heart and change their perspective and to help do that we are to love them through what they're going through instead of sitting back and and um trying to change them and you need to see it this way 
they're not gonna see it that way because they ain't walk through life like you walk through life they're not gonna see it that way because they they don't they may not be as far as in their christian walk as you are in your walk so they're not going to be able to see from your perspective so instead of beating them over the head love them where they are and i and I, and I can't stress the importance of loving people where they are because for me personally, like with my walk with God, I remember like, so my teenage years, most of my younger teenage years, I was in church. I, you know, I was on the praise dance team. I was on, you know, children's choir. I was doing all of that stuff. You know, I was active in our church. I was going to church every Sunday with one of my friends. And when, um, I, when I, you know, started talking to women, well, girls, you know, I was a kid at the time, but when I started doing that, the way that I was dealt with wasn't in love. And so everybody, you know, that's against the word of God. Okay. Yes. I know that. But because of, because of like, I, because of what I, my perspective at the time, God hated me because that's how people were treating me. Right? Like, we hate you because you're this we and it's like that's not what we're supposed to do no we they somebody should have said you know what god doesn't like this right god does not because we don't condone sin we don't sit back and say you know if, if we believe the bible for what it is we believe that god made you know all we we're not condoning sin but we're supposed to love the people and that's the thing like i didn't feel love i felt rejected and I was like, I'm out of here. So I left. My perspective of God shifted in that moment. My perspective of Christians shifted in that moment because I felt like, oh, I'm I'm gay. I can't, you know, be around them. I can't, you know, I can't go to church. Listen here. <laughs> we can't do that because we're pushing people away. I don't care what lifestyle they live. They belong to God. And God will work on their heart and whatever things that they're going through. But we can't push them away because we sit back and God doesn't like that. Love the person. So again, I spent multiple years out of the church because I felt rejected. I felt unloved. And I, I felt like God doesn't want me because I'm living this lifestyle. And so fast forward, years pass, and I'm in grad school at this point. And one of my friends, I love her to death, but who child, when I tell you at the time I could not stand her. <laughs> not that I couldn't stand her, the person, but she kept inviting me to church. And I was like, girl, I'm not going. I don't want to go. Um, because I was living how I was living. And I and and, and I in my head, again, my perspective at the time was I know God don't want me because I'm I'm living this life. And so I know I can't go to church. That was that was my perspective. That was what I was thinking at the time. And so she kept inviting me. I kept looking at her like, ew, girl, go away. I I'm not going. <laughs> and um I remember one day she invites me to this thing. Now I she says she told me what it is. I, I promise y'all, I don't she didn't tell me what the heck she was inviting me to. She just told me she wanted me to come to this event with her. And I looked at her and I was like, Okay, whatever. I go. And I told her, because I listen, I'm I'm this is me being transparent. I was on my way to strip club, y'all. I really was. I promise you. And we laugh about it to this day. And I told her, I say, I'm still going when I leave here. I'm I I don't care. And when I left there, I still went. I did, y'all. <laughs> don't judge me. I did. I this is me being transparent because at that time I wasn't there. But I go to this event. And I'm like, anyways, I'm ready to leave. I'm as soon as, soon as I left, call my friends, hey, let's go. And we was gone. And so, um, afterwards, I get this call and um, from somebody from the church that was the head host of this event. And I was like, what? I was done. I was. It kind of. It, it kind of uh, took 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 me for a minute because I was like. I ain't never filled out a card at somebody church and actually received a call back. So it threw me off. So the lady calls me and I, you know, and she doesn't ask me, do I want to come to church? She ain't invite me to church. She ain't do none of that. She just 
asked me if I wanted something to eat. Now y'all, <laughs> if y'all been away at college, y'all know it ain't nothing like a home cooked meal, right? Like, <laughs> and so this lady brought me for, I remember that meal to this day. Uh, she brought me some, it was some uh, broccoli rice. Uh, it was a little casserole. It was rice and broccoli and chicken. And um, I, she brought me a baked potato and a salad too. I know I when I tell you I remember that meal to this day and every time I cook it I think about her um every time I cook that casserole I think about her but um in that moment again she didn't she didn't sit back and ask me about church or she didn't know anything about me she just loved on me <laughs> she just extended her heart to me and that is when my perspective of God began to change because somebody started dealing with me in love. And so I start, eventually I went ahead and went on to church <laughs> and um, people start loving me. I start seeing the love. And even from the, the, my friend that invited me, she never, she knew, she knew what I was doing and she would tell me the truth in a heartbeat. Okay. She ain't sugarcoat how she felt about it, but she loved me. She loved me. She cared about me. She was concerned about me. She prayed for me. She reached out for me. She did all of the things. And as she did that, my perspective of Christians changed. My perspective of this walk with God changed. My pers All of those things began to change because somebody loved me where I was. They didn't bash me over the head with the Bible. They didn't tell me I needed to be, I had to be. They didn't do any of that. They loved me where I was. And God began to deal with my heart. God began to change my, my desires. God began to do all of the things. And so he did that part. It wasn't some person telling me about my sin. Yes, I know right from wrong and, and, and what God considers sin. I, I know that. But my point in this is, you know, people are going to come to you with these different perspectives, these different lenses, these different things that they have going on. Your job as a Christian is to love them where they are. Yes, you speak the truth, especially if they ask you. Yes, you speak the truth, but you speak it in love. And you never, ever, ever let, please let, hear me when I say this. Never make that person feel hated. Never should you treat them less than. It's not, it's the sin that's the problem. It is not the person that's the problem. And y'all, we gotta stop because there are too many people who are out of church because they feel like they can't be there because they walking in a certain lifestyle. Listen, yes, God, I'm, I'm in a different place. I, I have, you know, I have my husband, I have my children and different things like that. But still, there are people that are living homosexual lifestyle. They still need to be in church because God still loves them. God still cares about them. Yes. He does not condone the relationship. Yes, we know what the Bible says about that, but he still loves them. And so should we. I don't, you know, and I, and for me, what God is teaching me, I have to love that person. And that's hard. This is hard for me. Loving that person that has some racist tendencies. <laughs> Who, you know, does not show me love, who doesn't hear me, who can't understand, you know, the different things that I'm going through. I have to still love that person, right? Just because they are different than me doesn't, I still got to love them. I still have to love them. I still have to deal with people in love. And so we really have to realize everybody not going to go through life. They're not going to navigate life the way we do because their perspectives is different we all come to we all come to this thing with different with different outlooks and god has to deal with that god you know god will change our perspective here because there are things like the, the scripture tells us to be renewed by the uh, i mean be transformed by the renewing of your mind so as we renew our mind god will begin to shift our perspectives but we're not all going to think of, think the same because even the bible we look at the gospels right 
they're from multiple perspectives they're from different people's perspective of what they what they went through with jesus they we're going to have different perspectives in this life but we need to love people for where they are and so again i i i, I don't you know I don't know <laughs> you know I got on here thinking I was gonna talk about one thing um and you know sometimes I just be wanting a, 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 a straight point um to have like a takeaway um and and I don't know you know whatever it is that you take from this video you take from it um but if I can say nothing else to you um and if you if I just have to share a takeaway I think it is to just love people extend the love that god gives to you the same grace that god extends to you extend that to other people because they're not going to all think like you they're not going to see the world the way you see the world they're not going to understand and that's okay because some of your perspectives is jacked up too <laughs> Some of your perspectives need to be shifted to. Some of your perspective needs to come up under the word of God. Some of your perspectives need to change. And, and God has to deal with me too. I'm not speaking to you like I got it all together. Because he's working on me literally. As I speak, as I'm going through these things, I have to I have to shift how I look at things and I have to think differently. And I, I you know, I do try to see things from other people's perspectives, but it's very hard when I feel like um again my mine are being negated and that's not important you know all this, it, it really isn't i don't have to drive home these points with people um and again god's dealing with me but again if i had to say anything else anything that's just to take away from this is deal with people in love because when you show people the love of christ when you 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 tell them truth you do i'm not i'm not saying don't tell people the truth what i'm saying to you is you do so in love what i'm saying is you love the person i'm not telling you to okay nobody's sin we don't do that but you love the person and as you love the person as you extend god's love and grace to people he will do the work he will do the rest we ain't gotta do that we ain't gotta do that part God will do that. God will change their heart. God will move on. Just like God moved in faith with Pharaoh and did what he needed to do there. God will deal with the heart of the person. Our job <laughs> is to love them. So do that. <laughs> deal with people in love. That's all I got, y'all.